-hmm. I'm a nerd, okay? And I think I see so many things that nerds like me do wrong, especially young nerds. Issues that I see young nerds, young techs do time and time and time again that I finally decided to just kind of enumerate them and it, luckily it just happened to turn out to be 10, so. Never provide unsolicited tech support. The problem is, is especially when you come out of a great course like uh, Learn Keys A Plus course, you're, you're full of energy, you know, you're, you're, you're like an evangelist. You want to tell the world and you're like, you know, and you want to come out there and help them. Here, let me tell you about all hard drives. Only two things will come out of that, all right? Either number one, you're wrong and you're going to make a nuisance out of yourself and you're going to look like an idiot. Or two, you're right and you've now set a precedent of free tech support to that person for the rest of their lives. So, so my attitude is, is there's plenty of people who will solicit you, wait for them. Don't technobabble other techs. If you're technobabbling someone, you're insulting them because you're assuming that they don't know enough that they, you can use these words and get away with it. For a lot of people starting out, especially the younger people, it just has to come with a little bit of time. No matter what the temptation is, if you've got a warranty, stick to it. Those classic situations when you're a baby tech and your sister's aunt's plumber's girlfriend needs help, and then you're coming in out of nowhere and you start working on a machine, something goes thunk, and you can't get an RMA anymore because you've just voided the warranty. Don't do it. Been there. Bad idea. Bringing up the baby techs to help them out and to pass it forward is, is critical. A lot of times baby techs, you know, they're just like this swarm of little people and they all talk to each other and everything. But over time, as they begin to specialize, they recognize that in and of their specialty is job security, you know, is better pay. And it's a bad habit that techs have, and even I've done this sometimes, is where I tend to want to, what really makes job security is good networks. And bringing up the baby techs to help them out and to pass it forward is, is critical. It's critical that you, you keep growing. Nothing terrifies me more than some tech who starts going, ah, you know, Windows XP is good enough for me, don't need, Vista was terrible, Seven's not much better, I'm sticking with what I know. Here's a, here's a tech, all right, this is the beginning of their career, okay, you get your first job, you start learning really hard. Anybody who's not got a job where they're not learning has got a problem. And then all of a sudden it starts to go like this, it starts to flatten out because you've built up the skill set you're going to be able to get from that job. A good tech, in my opinion, will move when that happens. They're going to look for something new and they're going to build up again. If you don't grow, I'm not as interested in dealing with you because I get nervous. I, I'm afraid that when you're exposed to something new, you're, you're not going to be able to stay on top of it. Did I give you an impression that this might be an important thing? Don't look at any passwords that you don't need to look at. You know, as a tech, you get the keys to the kingdom. You know, I mean, if somebody from accounting is in sales, you know, people are going to be looking up over their cubicle and going, hey, why is Joe from accounting here? But Mike from IT? Eh, I'm just working on somebody's computer, right? So what happens is we want to become the gatherers of security. We just do it by default. And, you know, it, you want to grab this password. You get this key. You start grabbing this and that. And people will give it to you. The downside is, is that anything that can possibly go wrong, who are they going to turn to first? Passwords, the keys, anything like that. You just avoid it. Uh, I literally, if, if I'm working on your computer and you type in a password, I physically turn my body around because the last thing I want is there to be any question mark that I might have been able to see that password. The same skill set that makes you a good nerd can also get you in trouble sometimes in a corporate environment. It's just the nature of the beast. Luckily, 95% of the time you end up getting your knuckles wrapped and you know, you cover back down and you're okay. But 5% of the time, I've, I've seen people go to prison. Anybody listening to this should understand they have to train and you're not going to get paid for it most of the time. You are the trainer. It's your job to actually train, even if that's not on your job description. Your job is to provide training. If somebody needs to learn Excel, you teach them Excel. If there's a training department, great, then get them going in the training department. But I, I don't let lack of IT knowledge prevent my organization from getting done what they need to get done. Hug a jock, man. You gotta hug a jock. As nerds, we tend to really, really insulate ourselves within our own society. And it's very easy for us to find ourselves in situations where most of our social life is done over a headset in World of Warcraft raids. But I make a, I make a point for my own personal psyche to hug a jock, hang out with people who I would not consider nerdy. You're broadening yourself is really what it boils down to. And by broadening yourself, you generate respect from broader groups. User advocate may be the most important. When my job says I'm to do this, 
I'm going to take it further than that because I'm an evangelist for technology and I'm going to become what I call a user advocate. How many people still have index cards or worse than that, post-it notes you know, all over the place? It's not that hard to teach people how to do some basic application stuff to allow them to organize themselves. User advocate requires you as a tech to begin to understand the business of your organization. As a nerd, it's easy for me to just swap hard drives, do you understand? I don't necessarily have to become into the shipping business or you know, making ice cream or whatever the organization is that's hiring. I don't agree with that. My job, once I get in there, is to understand the entire business. And once I understand the business, then I can see how technology comes into play. And there's a name for a person like that. It's called a system analyst, not a technician. No nerd ever wants to ask for help. The number one thing, the most powerful statement any tech can ever tell me is, you ready? I don't know, but I know how to find out. By asking for help, I get stuff done faster. And by asking for help, you know, I'm pu putting it forward. You never know what baby tech can help you out. And by asking for help, those who are smarter and above me get an opportunity to pay it forward. It, it creates an organization of interconnectivity where people are helping each other, but it's hard for us. We just don't want to ask for help. Listen, if you need to contact me for anything, I mean anything, just remember one magic word. You ready? D-E-S-W-E-D-S. -E -D -E -D Des Weds. And when you type it with one finger on your left hand, you'll see why I use that name. I'm Des Weds at everything. Just type in Des Weds. Uh, you can chat with me. You can send me emails. You can check out my Facebook pages. Anything you want. If you do that, I will contact you back and I will give you lots of extra information, good stuff, good people to communicate with, and it's absolutely critical. And by the way, get your instructor to contact me too, okay?